The world of TV is littered with alternate castings which could have tanked hit shows. Of course, there is more than a few TV shows which have been carried by their performances alone for a good chunk of their runtime. Since great acting can make poor scripts decent, or at least that's what I tell myself as I read off this bit of paper every day. It's not to say that different castings would have been awful per se, since in some cases, the actor not cast in the original part was kept on hold, eventually getting another role elsewhere in the series which they then nailed into the floorboards. However, more often than not, the near miss is so bizarre that you'll be thanking your lucky stars that we don't inhabit the parallel universe where it actually happened. Even the most critically acclaimed TV of all time has had its formula almost rumbled by a wildly inappropriate actor meaning we could have witnessed the very breaking of television as we now know it. That might sound dramatic, but you just wait and see what we've got in store. I am the understudy of Ash from What Culture, and these are 10 disastrous TV castings that almost happened. 10. Pamela Anderson as Dana Scully, The X-Files this is really kicking things off with a weird one and also acts as a rare example of studio meddling being a surprisingly positive move. When Chris Carter wrote the original first script of The X-Files, Pamela Anderson was the only woman on his mind, with his work specifically written for the Baywatch star. The draft focused more on a struggling to be taken seriously, the sexism and misogyny in the FBI and Scully's supermodel looks. A mixture of discrimination, blonde jokes and the glass ceiling saw her promising career derailed when she was eventually paired with Spooky Mulder. Fox, as in the studio, not Mulder, didn't think Pamela Anderson was the right person for the project though, and insisted on Carter auditioning other actresses. Once he saw a different Anderson, Gillian, read for the role, he changed his tune immediately. The script was retooled to be grittier, focusing on Scully's medical training and tenacity. Scully became less of a caricature and evolved into one of the most well-rounded characters in sci-fi television history. Thank you for your sacrifice, Pam. 9. Matt LeBlanc as Phil Dumphy, Modern Family if you can look past the slightly camp, almost dated vibe of the jokes, Modern Family can be a seriously funny show with a great cast. And it has got armfuls of Emmys to its name, making it one of the most successful TV comedies out there. With the 90s inspiration that permeates through the show's style, it is no wonder that they turn to a superstar of the era when casting. Matt LeBlanc was offered the role of goofy dad Phil Dumphy, but turned it down thinking that he was wrong for the part. Phil has well-meaning childishness, unstoppable enthusiasm, and a lack of common sense, so it's a role with a lot of similarity to LeBlanc's Joey from Friends. But considering the huge success Ty Burrell has had in the role, his decision to turn it down was probably for the best. In the end, Ed O'Neill as Phil's father-in-law Jay ended up being the sitcom veteran who held the cast together. 8. Ray Liotta as Tony Soprano, The Sopranos Given that Ray Liotta's career hasn't exactly sparkled in the past 25 years or so, you have to wonder if the Goodfellas star regretted his decision to turn down seminal TV drama The Sopranos. The show is hailed with ushering in the golden age of high-quality television drama, but Liotta wanted no part of it when it was first coming to fruition. He was scouted by producers for the crime drama, but decided against even auditioning, fearing playing Tony Soprano so soon after Goodfellas would see him typecast as a one-note guy. After Liotta turned them down, showrunner David Chase changed tactics. He decided to go for a relatively unknown actor, one without typical Hollywood good looks, and cast James Galdafini instead. This decision paid off handsomely as The Sopranos became a huge hit off the back of Galdafini's now powerhouse performance. Sopranos writer Matthew Weiner <laughs> would later repeat this trick of casting an unknown star with John Hamm as Don Draper in his own show Mad Men, another decision which turned out to be genius. 7. Richard Lewis as Mork, Happy Days slash Mork and Mindy Nothing against Richard Lewis with this one. The New York comedian has had a strong stand-up career and did a fantastic job in Robin Hood, Men in Tights, amongst many other things. However, considering the role of Mork went to Robin Williams and ended up launching his career, it is hard to see Lewis as anything other than a downgrade. With so much comedy talent, it's likely that Williams would have gotten his big break elsewhere even if he had missed out. But it's better to not take that chance. Without Williams playing Mork, we might not have gotten his Genie, his Mrs. Doubtfire, his Patch Adams, his Teddy Roosevelt, and countless other hilarious roles. Playing Mork in Happy Days before spinning off into his own show, the role was only Williams's sixth ever credit. 
He went on to have a huge stand-up career as well as breaking into Hollywood for major roles, moving on to more serious films later in his career. Had Richard Lewis been able to do an alien voice, he might never have gotten the chance though. Lewis's unconvincing space accent, if it sounded Danish, Lewis admits in his autobiography, was what put producers off him in the first place. And thankful we remain that his intergalactic patter is as bad as it was. 6. Hank Azaria as Joey Friends There were quite a few notable actors who auditioned for Friends. Courtney Cox initially read for Rachel, whilst Ellen DeGeneres auditioned for Phoebe and Vince Vaughn for Joey. John Cryer also turned down the role of Chandler, so it could have been a very different bunch. Arguably the best casting not to happen though was the voice of Mo Sislak, Hank Azaria as Joey. Not because Azaria would have been bad in the role, but because him missing out allowed him to be later cast as David the Scientist, one of the best recurring love interests in the show. Azaria was so interested in the role he auditioned twice. It was his second go around which kept producers interested and eventually got him a phone call about the role of David. Azaria has since admitted feeling a little better watching the first series as on a rewatch, most fans would admit that the earliest season doesn't hold up. He was turned around by the second season though and ended up playing a fantastic part. 5. Adam Scott as Jim Halpert The Office Just like Hank Azaria previously, this is a great example of a strong audition getting you a part further down the road, even if it's not the one you auditioned for. Unlike Azaria though, in Adam Scott's case, it wasn't even on the same show. John Krasinski ended up getting the role of Jim, and with how iconic his role in The Office has become, it is clear that the casting directors made the right call. Nobody could have Jim the camera as well as Krasinski when all is said and done, and it is difficult to imagine Scott and Jenna Fisher's Pam building as good a dynamic as Fisher and Krasinski did. Not that Scott can't build dynamics well. The audition for Jim ended up getting Adam Scott cast in a lead role in The Office's pseudo-sister show, Parks and Recreation. On that, he connected with Amy Poehler's Leslie Nope as well as Krasinski did with Fisher. 4. Chris Rock as George Costanza Seinfeld this one is just an absolute mismatch. Seinfeld is one of the greatest sitcoms ever, and Chris Rock is one of the funniest comedians around when he's on four. Considering Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David set out to make a show about stand-ups coming with bits for their act, he seemed like a perfect fit. The fact is, though, he just isn't. Maybe it's because Jason Alexander was irreplaceably hilarious in the role, but Chris Rock's energy just seems completely wrong for the part. He's far too up there, all excitement, drama, and body language. He wouldn't be the worst Kramer in the world, come to think of it, but as George, he is practically the antithesis. With Seinfeld's dry delivery, Kramer's eccentricity, and Elaine's wit, throwing Chris Rock's hyperactivity in there just rocks the boat. Jason Alexander's subtler brand of humor beds into the cast much more naturally. As well as Rock and Alexander, Danny DeVito was also in the running. He feels like he's much closer to what the show needed, but it is still definitely right that Alexander got the bag. 3. Katie Holmes as Buffy Summers Buffy the Vampire Slayer Katie Holmes is best known for two things, marrying Tom Cruise and getting recast in Batman. Neither are things to be especially proud of, and now she can add a third to that list of lowlights as she just missed out on the lead in one of the most iconic shows of the late 90s. Katie Holmes was in the frame to play Buffy in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a role that went on to be played fantastically by Sarah Michelle Gellar. It would have been Holmes's first screen role ever, but by missing out she was able to star in Dawson's Creek instead. Once she met, and seven weeks later, got engaged to Tom Cruise though, her career pumped the brakes almost immediately. Between 05 and 08, she didn't act at all. As for Gellup, her career has floundered somewhat since then also, starring in relative misses like Scooby-Doo, the cult classic that it is, Ringer, and The Grudge. But still, Buffy is a character with a massive legacy, and it owes a great deal to Sarah Michelle Gellar's performance. 2. Matthew Broderick as Walter White Breaking Bad a lot of the entries here offer interesting alternate universe castings. LeBlanc in Modern Family, Scott in The Office, and Azario and Friends would have all still been enjoyable even if the casting we actually got was far superior. With Matthew Broderick as Walter White though, we can consider this a serious bullet dodged. It's true that both Broderick and eventual castee Brian Cranston made their names in comedy, with Broderick best known for things like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, The Cable Guy, and Inspector Gadget. He did have some serious experience, but it was all severely limited. The decision to go with a comedy actor did lull audiences in, and made Walter's transition to Heisenberg all the more compelling. Broderick, though, didn't want to play a bad guy, and neither did John Cusack, who also was scouted. So Cranston stepped in and delivered an irreplaceable masterclass. Anything less would have been a disservice to television itself. 1. Ewan Rian as Jon Snow 
Game of Thrones. Incredibly, Ewan Rian initially auditioned for Jon Snow on Game of Thrones, but ended up making a name for himself as arguably the show's best villain instead, with his turn as Ramsay Bolton a ridiculously impressive one. There's stiff competition from Tywin Lannister and Joffrey Baratheon, but Ramsay more than holds his own. As the evil Bolton bastard, Rian took delight in torturing Theon Greyjoy, managing to be comically manic and devilishly sinister all at once. His every appearance on screen made your skin crawl, with Rian stealing the show every single time. It's hard to imagine anyone else delivering quite that level of manic evil in as engaging a way. Not to mention Kit Harington's turn as Jon Snow being a defining part of Game of Thrones' history. Though the final season saw him saddled with poorer lines, that shouldn't sully the magnificent performance he put in over the course of the series as one who truly knows nothing. He was a brilliant Jon Snow, and Ewan Rian was a brilliant Ramsay Bolton, and it should be kept that way. And that's our list. Which of these actors would have been the worst replacement? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash, and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and offer up a blood sacrifice in the name of the What Culture Overlords. Thanks for watching.